Um, I would I would like to know that Mike Heil, who you just heard speaking, did most of the heavy lifting in this research uh, effort. A number of us are involved on the project in the region, and um, I'd like to talk about some of the practical thoughts we have for manure handlers and some of the things that we are taking to the industry as part of our outreach. We start commonly with confined spaces, reminding people that these areas are dangerous, that we should not enter these areas without the proper protocol and safety procedures. We're not going to go into those uh, very deep today because we're worried about these uh, external open air manure storages. But we do remind people that gases in there can cause loss of consciousness and death. And we should always assume that those gases are present. If you think of a confined space, the traditional thoughts we have do not reflect upon the photos that Mike showed you. Uh, and here's the photo of the Montour County uh, manure storage where the two boys were unconscious. But think about what these storages actually present. As these bullets below here point out, these areas are large enough to enter. They have limited restriction, limited uh, exit. And they're not designed for continuous worker occupancy. So in reality, these areas can be thought of and should be thought of as confined spaces. Once especially we, if we cross that fence, we are in an area where uh, recovery and danger is present. We should take proper uh, precautions. I like to remind people that we have a responsibility in our industries as uh, educators, as agency folks, as producers, as agricultural specialists, that we can learn about these things and understand some of the dangers, but we also have children involved around a lot of our farms, and we need to try to make decisions for them and make sure that they are safe. So here we have a statement that everyone has an obligation to design, supply, buy, operate, and maintain manure storage and handling systems that are safe for workers, visitors, and children. Uh, previous studies have shown that uh, up to 11% of the confined state deaths have occurred to children, and that's a little over one out of 10. And I took these photos all at the Manor Expo when it was in Ontario, Canada, and every time there was a confined space or an open hole, it seemed like a child wanted to walk up and peer into it. So keep that in mind as we move through. Gases are and can be colorless, odorless, and some are explosive. The one we're concerned about today, hydrogen sulfide does sink. We can have stratification of gases within a confined space, stratification uh, in these open air situations, especially if we have stable air without much uh, wind turbulence. Some gases, like methane, uh, would rise. Hydrogen sulfide, I see some uh, notes in the chat taught uh, to some links that uh, would probably give us some good OSHA guidance on these. Mike also mentioned some guidance levels. I have a chart here that uh, lists both human and some swine uh, concerns. Generally, we would think of animal uh, danger levels being similar to those that are published for people. I don't see a lot of uh, real hard, uh, solid evidence or uh, published guidelines for animals. There are some good guidelines out there, but not like we would have for OSHA. But here are some that we can highlight. Many people can detect and smell hydrosulfide at one part per million. It's that rotten egg smell, and down to 0 0.3 parts per million, many people can detect it. However, if we get to uh, levels of 100 parts per million, it can deaden our sense of smell. I like to remind workers that if we think we're in hydrogen sulfide, we're smelling that rotten egg smell, and it goes away, it may not have gotten better. You could be in a uh, more dangerous situation because it's overloading and uh, decreasing your ability to actually smell that chemical. And as Mike had mentioned, it can be deadly at 600 parts per million. With the swine effects, we can see that at 20 parts per million continual exposure, we could have uh, effects on behavior and production. At 200 parts per million, uh, we can have respiratory tract uh, irritations and uh, decreases in productive activities with that. We encourage every worker, especially our commercial haulers who get around to a lot of different farms, and especially producers who have uh, just some at their farms, we encourage them to 
invest in the few hundred dollars in insurance policy and that policy uh, transferring to a personal safety monitor. These monitors can test for oxygen deficiency, combustible gases, and toxic gases such as hydrogen sulfide. We have the ability to have both multiple gas and single gas monitors. Cost comes into play. Ease of use comes into play. These things do need calibrated and uh, maintained season to season. Single gas monitor, of course, we recommend having hydrogen sulfide as your single gas monitor with multiple gas monitors. We also might recommend methane, ammonia, and then oxygen because all the gases that can be produced, hundreds of gases uh, varieties can be produced from manures. If any of them displace oxygen, then those uh, gases are dangerous. We can use the word here in quotes saying that we are using the monitor to see the invisible gas, and we have programs available where you can own or even lease. So there are programs where the manure hauler can lease a monitor, send it back in after the season, and have it, have it uh, calibrated and maintain and then get a new, fresh, ready-to-go uh, monitor back to him. Some safety tips. Open-air manure storages. These situations we're talking about all have blue sky above them. And here are some ideas that, that we like to talk about. No horseplay. That should make sense for all of us. No smoking, open flames, or sparks. If equipment malfunctions, very important. Take the extra minute to shut it down pull it out of the storage, especially agitation equipment, before you service it. Make sure that we're taking the few steps uh, and few minutes that we need to make sure that all workers are safe. If a worker or a visitor to the farm is feeling unsure or uncomfortable, they should step back, go, go to an area where there's fresh air. And if you uh, come upon or are involved with a situation where you have an emergency, you should be able to call 911, have a phone with you, and describe the incident, mentioning that you have a confined space or an air quality issue so that the emergency response can send the proper professionals to help you with these situations. Tips for, monitor, uh, tips for operators. Again, use a monitor. Observe agitation from a distance. Consider remote control kill switches. The first hour of agitation, we uh, usually say it's probably the worst. But if you recall Mike's slides, his uh, monitors or his uh, data that we just saw went out to an hour and 40 minutes, and we still had spikes of hydrogen sulfide levels that were pretty high well past one hour. But we should never let our guard down. Hydrogen sulfide is heavier than air, so higher is better if you're an operator. Remember the health of nearby livestock. We have a number of uh, reports that we talked about and gave you uh, evidence of where people were injured, but we have more reports if we talk to our commercial haulers where livestock uh, have collapsed or died. So we need to keep those uh, livestock in mind at the farm. And here at the bottom is a very important point. This is one time when the agricultural work ethic can actually backfire. In agricultural, we all want to see the work done, work through the pain, to make sure we can get on to the next job. In this situation, if we work through the pain, there may not be a next job. So it's OK to take a step back and literally take a breather. Another observed uh, a thing from this data is that gases will flow in the direction of the manure agitation nodule. So uh, we don't have hard data to really pinpoint the exact plumes that are occurring here. But we do know that if we are agitating in a direction like you might see here, that this situation could actually be throwing gases in that direction toward the barn. So throw is a really non-scientific term, but pretty descriptive and, and gives a lot of people an idea of what we want to talk about and stress. Operator position. People that are working around the manure storage, especially the people using agitation equipment. Do not use agitation equipment that requires you to routinely reach over or adjust machinery near the edge or at the edge of the manure storage. Do not place the equipment in a low-lying area. It's a heavy gas, hydrogen sulfide, so we want to try to stay away from it. And also, if we can, choose an upwind position so that the wind is in our favor and we're not blowing the fumes back into ourselves. We have an unconditional recommendation that gypsum bedding 
should never be used in situations where the manure is stored under the floor of the barns. It's just an uh, accident waiting to happen. There are hundreds of farms that fed with gypsum quite safely, but the situation with an underfloor storage uh, does, in our view, add a lot more risk to the situation. Part of these scenarios that have played out and part of the work that we've done and the support that we've had from NRCS has been fantastic. There's a new sign, and these signs are being distributed in our region for uh, new constructed projects that are uh, of manure storages that NRCS are helping to design or implement. And hopefully you'll be seeing these in projects wherever you're at. And it's a really nice uh, reminder for anybody coming to that storage, especially if they're going to work with gas that pay, or work with that chase equipment that the uh, gas can be present. I like to remind people that gypsum and liquid are not needed to have danger. We have lots of stories where involving liquid manure or gypsum, but there are also a number of stories out there where people uh, turning solid manure or working with solid manure have become unconscious, have died. So remember, all manures are organic material, and they're under some state of microbial degradation. Gas byproducts come from that my microbial uh, respiration and that microbial process and the gases are produced, sometimes at dangerous levels. I know of six producers or haulers who have been unconscious when working around manure storages or with manure uh, handling equipment, and two of them were in poultry barns working and cleaning out poultry barns. And so it was a dry material, but the gas is there. It may not, I would doubt if it's hydrogen sulfide because of the uh, conditions that they were in, but the gases there uh, did render them unconscious. One of the things I like to talk about is body alarms. If our smoke alarm goes off at our house tonight, uh, we'll probably all investigate it, get up and, and figure out what the problem is, and hopefully get out of the house if there is a problem. I have looked at a lot of the gases in agricultural situations that can cause health issues. They might be hydrogen sulfide or ammonia or the lack of oxygen. They all could have different symptoms of uh, exposure. And I've taken the list of exposure, regardless of the uh, gas, and put them into a list here. And some of them would overlap between gases, and some of them might be specific only to one or two gases. But these I call body alarms. And if anybody uh, can tuck these thoughts into their head, and then tomorrow or a year from now or five years from now, experience any of these situations, they would hopefully have an alarm trigger in their head, their body would tell them, Something's wrong, and I need to uh, get to fresh air. So reading through these quickly, these would include dizziness, wobbly knees, feeling hot and clammy, lack of attention to details, loss of motor skills or fatigue, anxiety, severe eye irritation or decrease in sight, irregular or fast heartbeat, headaches, nausea. If you look at these four, that deal with the uh, inability to breathe, shortness of breath, panting, pausing, stopping of breath, respiratory tract, uh, irritation, or coughing. I like to point out that if, you're, if your body is calling for, for oxygen, you feel like you just climbed up four flights of steps and you're panting, but you really haven't exerted yourself, that should be a good sign that the oxygen where you're at is not sufficient for your body uh, to operate under the conditions you're in. So you should... Uh, you know, back out and get the fresh air. Other signs, tightness of chest, acute bronchitis, asphyxiation, and loss of consciousness. As mentioned, I know six people uh, who have woken up under a manure handling situation and woken up because of exposure to gas. Finally, pay attention to these body alarms. Pay attention to your body. Know your body and know if you're experiencing signs of gas exposure and get the fresh air. So hopefully uh, you can... Use these yourself and pass these on to other people and use this as an extension uh, outreach tool. If you're interested in this and would like to learn more, at the Chambersburg, Pennsylvania, Menor, uh, North American Menorah Expo this July on tour day on July 14th, we will be at a dairy doing our uh, Menorah Expo agitation demonstrations. We'll have a number of vendors there to show off their equipment but one of the things we're going to do is Mike will be there as well as the rest of our team 
to actually set up uh, monitoring equipment, show you how we did some of this, and then educate the people in attendance about these issues and spend a little more time maybe than we have today on these issues and get some one-on-one -on -one time while the uh, event is going on. So what we'll actually end up doing at the end of the agitation demonstration is come back and be able to tell you what we saw. You'll be able to look at the agitation as it's going on and then see what we learned, discuss what we learned from the monitoring end while it's happening. Um, I know that this presentation is available for you to print and will be available uh, through recording for you to come back and review, but we wanted to thank the NRCS for their support of this uh, program. Uh, not only was it great to find out the data, but also the outreach uh, components of this. USA Gypsum was critical in uh, helping us find the farms and supplying materials, and then Industrial Scientific helped us with the um, monitoring equipment. We have a list here of video presentations as well as some fact sheets that you can visit and do some uh, further learning on. And here are a number of websites that you could also explore at your leisure. With that, I uh, thank everybody and would invite you to come see the poster that Mike will present at Ways to Work. Uh, Mike and I also have other presentations that we will be doing at the Ways to Work conference. And we I uh, really appreciate Joe and Leslie and Jill letting us team up with them.